Good afternoon, everybody. This is Steve. Welcome to the Little Little Wood Shop and our Sunday evening blog. All right. Well, this week we have to we have to shoot up in the shop only because the house and the home office is a little little noisy today. All right. So here we go. Today's topic is CNC project cost estimation. What do I charge for my work? What is my hourly rate? And how do I come up with that? Well, after a, a, a significant amount of research, I, I hope I have, uh, I can clarify things just a little bit easier for everybody. Now, again, I've, I've told you all that I don't really have anything to go by other than my own hands-on experience. Last week, we released a, a marketing strategy uh, video for that particular Sunday evening blog. You know, I got some dislikes on it. I understand uh, the first thing I'm going to promise each and every one of you here right now, I have no get-rich schemes for anybody. There's a pile of them out there on the Internet promising you Ferraris in your garage and Olympic-sized pools in the backyard, okay? I'm not that guy. Um, I'm a simple, self-employed guy who loves woodworking and you know, the nerd end of the CNC and computer side of his life, and this is what I've chosen to do with it. If you're looking to get rich, honestly, I, I don't have those answers for you, especially to, to try to make six figures in six months or less, and, okay, I'm not that guy. But I at least like to be honest enough to, to tell you that, all right? So, on with our story. To figure out, and... We've got the blog basically here as a script, so we can, we can keep this in a timely fashion for all of you. What do I charge? Okay. I researched my area to try to figure out who my competition was, and where I particularly live, there isn't a lot of it. Uh, my hourly rate right off the top is, is on the website. We're going to tweak it just a little bit more, but this is what I've come up with. The blog goes into greater detail, so we're just going to kind of skim over things. Project cost estimation. First of all, you need to know what do you need to make to make your shop happen. In my case, this is a full-time endeavor. I do other things outside of here uh, to make money, but this is a full-time endeavor for me uh, with other part-time things to help supplement my income. So. How much money do you have to make? What is the financial footprint that you have to have coming in to make this happen for you? Uh, some of you may still have to work a job. I'll be very honest about that. When, when you open a new business, it is a struggle. Again, I'm not going to sugarcoat anything for anybody, all right? Uh, what are you willing to go without to make it happen? Will you forego a new vehicle or... Maybe that big $10,000 trip to Europe or whatever, okay? What are you willing to give up to make this happen for you? But the bottom line is, what do you need to make? So, I derived at a full-time level, and this is strictly an example for the blog, I put down a $50,000 year salary. It's strictly an example, and I know some of you are going, Steve, you're, you're opening a shop and you're putting fifty k out on the table. Well, please just hear me out. The next thing that's going to really have you scratch in your head is this one, uh, vacation. As part of this example, we're going to allot four weeks, okay? Again, with, that's, that's broken up into, uh, into two categories. So please stick with me and we'll get to that one in just a minute. Material cost. As with anything you do, you're either a woodworker, an engraver, maybe you run a plasma cutter, a water jet, whatever the case is, there's material associated that have to be factored in to the cost of the project for you to even cut the estimate of the proposal. All right? We're going to go into greater detail on that as well. You have to figure in your labor hours that are associated with whatever it is you're making, fabricating, engraving, or building. Your overhead expenses. Now, I will go into a little bit more greater detail here. My shop, all of my woodworking tools, my saws, table saws, vacuums, dust collector, even the CNC machine, 
I physically own everything outright. Okay? But I still have the electricity associated with the shop. I have the taxes that are based for this building and the square footage. I have to pay my plow guy because where I live we do get a significant amount of the white stuff. Uh, we have a supplemental backup heater uh, behind the camera which just runs on propane so I have a heating fuel that I have to figure in. Uh, ground maintenance, you know, fuel to, from the lawnmower and just the basic grounds upkeeping. You want to keep your, your business looking, you know, spot on. You want it to look nice. So that all gets figured in to my, my overall overhead expense cost. The other thing you want to figure in, and these are the things that you just have in stock because you have to have them in order to do your job. So they're going to be your glues, your paints, thinners, paint brushes, finishing supplies, sanding supplies, uh, nails for your nail gun, things of that nature. These are things that you have in house and unless you're doing one particular job that dictates certain specific things, well these are items that you have to have on hand anyways. Well, the industry standard for a small business is above and beyond the quote you figure in an extra 10 to 15 percent add-on to cover these things throughout the calendar year. Okay? Profit. Well, if you've done your CNC project cost estimation correctly, you will make a profit. What is a profit? A profit is the monetary remaining remain oh yeah excuse me a profit is the monetary remaining after all costs are deducted from the total revenue this will also include the tax associated within the revenue itself and in some cases some businesses uh, if you're looking to expand expand or branch out which we're not there is an expansion of 10 percent uh, an example would be a business franchise, okay? I'm not looking to franchise, so above and beyond my, my 10 to 15 percent that I add on for my overhead expense, I do not add an additional 10 percent on for an expansion. I have no intention of expanding. Now, your selling expenses. This is something else that you would figure in uh, to the cost other than your overhead cost, your, your labor rate per hour and your material cost. Let's say you're going to go to uh, a trade show. You're maybe going to a market or you're going to put a booth at a county fair. There's an expense figured in with that. Uh, the markup for this is generally 10 to 15 percent. Next, uh, do you have a retail store? Well, I don't. I pretty much, I do what they call uh, off, off table. I sell out of my shop pretty much or if I run a small item uh, I have a, a market line up here where we strictly sell online so there's no there's no retail store uh, if you get into a retail most markups are generally what I've read anyways I'm um, like I said I'm no marketing guru here uh, is 75 to 100 percent markup above and beyond the cost of the item that you would charge for somebody to walk through your door and purchase it from you all right this is the exact formula that's in this blog that I'm going to read back to you now. And I broke it down literally this simple. There's 365 days in a calendar year. There's 52 weeks within that calendar year. Now, this is where I'll highlight real quick. Four weeks of vacation. You're going, Steve, you're just opening a business at 50K a year and you're figuring four weeks off. Well, in actuality, only two of those weeks you are going to need a break. You're going to bust your hump, but you're going to need at least two weeks a year to spend time with the missus. Maybe you got little ones. you got to have a little time. You may not, starting out, obviously have money to go to Hawaii with the family, but you can take a week off. You can do little day trips. Where I live, it's national forest, mountain biking, hiking, trails, day trips. But take that week off with the missus and the kids and, and spend those two weeks a year. Now the other two weeks that I'm talking about here are business related. Maybe there's an expo in your town. They're, they're bringing in a new line of CNC machines. Maybe you're going to stay at a motel overnight. Grab yourself some food, your gas, all that. 
but you're going to stay and you're going to go to an expo. Those are the other two weeks of the year that I'm talking about. Uh, you've got to go to maybe a home improvement center. Well, where I live, I'm an hour plus from any big type retail store. Uh, like I said, I do try to do as much locally as I can, but I'm limited by what they carry. So when I have to go to a big chain store, I make it sure, <clears throat> excuse me, I make sure it's worth my while, and I'm generally there for the day. I pick up bulk materials, I pick up things that I can't find locally, bottom line. Uh, maybe you're, you're going out to look at a job, you're going to quote something, maybe you're somebody who's CNC uh, machine, you make kitchen cabinets, well, maybe starting out, you're going to go out to the client's job, you're going to measure that job up, maybe while you're out there, you're going to take them out to lunch, you're going to talk about design ideas, that's part of those two weeks, that I'm, the other two weeks out of those 30 days or four weeks of vacation that I'm talking about, okay? All right, just so we can clarify that. Now, you deduct your four weeks of vacation slash business vacation trip from 52 weeks. That leaves 48 weeks left at 40 hours per week. Now, if we multiply 48 weeks times 40, uh, 40 hours per work week, we're 1,920 hours over that calendar year. Now, to come up with your hourly rate, depending on what you need to make for your salary, and for this example, we used $50,000 a year, well, you divide 50000 by 1,920 hours, and you come up with an hourly shop rate of $26.41, 26 bucks an hour. Now, suddenly, that fifty k a year doesn't look so bright, okay? Because $26 an hour in a CNC shop is dirt cheap. And I don't really know of anybody who's working for that. Now, the project, and I even figured you guys had a project for this, you ladies and gentlemen, and I'm sitting on it right here, right now. This beautiful little garden bench is what I estimated uh, for the project. And I'm going to give you the breakdown and the walkthrough for this real quick. We'll try to keep it down. Mm. But I still need caffeine. All right. Uh, for the example given, at an hourly rate of $26 per man hour on a $50,000 a year salary requirement, under the projection that I just gave you with that little, that little formula there, okay, the materials for this particular bench, and we'll read these off real quick, uh, it was a 2 by 12 by 16 foot stick of Douglas fir, uh, a 2 by 4 by 8 foot stick of Fur, uh, hemlock, I think, is what we've got underneath this. Quarter inch by three inch Spax power lag. It's basically a hex headed washer uh, self tapping screw at 25 cents a piece for $2.50 for all your hardware. Uh, it was for 10 of those. A one inch by 72 inch. Wooden dowel. Now I've told you to keep my cost down. I use what I have on hand, and I had a I had a piece of dark poplar at one and a quarter inch diameter. But you can you can buy whatever size you like. And last and least is one can of Minwax spar urethane in a spray can at nine dollars and fifty six cents. My material cost for this bench was forty eight dollars and twelve cents. I ended up. I, I have Helmsman on hand. It's what's available for me. I buy it locally. Uh, but for the sake of the example, the material cost for this project was $48.12. The complete project cost. We have to factor in a few things here. For, the, for, for you to come up with the physical project cost, what is the power of your CNC machine? Because a 4 kilowatt or a 3 kilowatt spindle, you're going to be able to, to motor along a little faster and a little deeper than you can with, say, a 2, 2 and a quarter horsepower, you know, uh, router. I mean, I've got the biggest router on my machine that I could, I could afford, but by no means does it have the power of a spindle. So you got to take into account a little bit of time there. Your speeds and feeds, you know, uh, are you going to stain it? Will it be painted? Okay, in this case, 
We chose far urethane for, for usage, uh, how quick it can go, and time savings. Now, I put a figure of three hours on this project. That's a little tight with the CNC equipment. Uh, however, if you were doing this as a woodworker, yeah. And I would probably say four hours, but for the sake of this example, we went $26 an hour on our labor rate times three hours of labor plus $48.12 in our material plus a 15% addition for our overhead expenses, our sandpapers, our, you know, our, our hardware and, and things of that nature that we have on hand. And I came up with a total cost of this bench that I'm sitting on, it figured with a three hour labor rate of $129.09. I would probably add one extra hour if I was milling this in the machine. Okay, I don't charge an expansion cost in this shop. I'm not looking to expand or franchise out. If you were going to go to a farmer's market, a flea market, or a fair, I would figure in 10 to 15 percent markup on your items to cover the expense of your booth or your little spot there. Aside from that, that is pretty much this project cost broken down for this particular item. Again, I don't know what you need to make per hour. The blog lays the formula right out for you to see. So, by all means, plug in some numbers, run some numbers, look at your local area. Now, the one thing I will tell you is we included a three-part video for this, which I'm not going to get into here to keep this down. Uh, but all in all, I, I think that the, uh, the formula will work. The blog is written out for me, is, is easy to read, and it's under a thousand words, so most people can jam that out in a few minutes, five, six, seven minutes. You can read the whole blog. And that was about it. My subscribers, my followers, all of you out there, I hope you get a little something out of this. Again, I'm not the guru. I go by what I have, what little I have in my head, and I do the best I can to, to move forward, all right? I make no promises of, of getting rich to any of you. That's not what I'm here for. I told you in the opening blog that this is an adventure for me. I appreciate those of you who are following me, and again, this, this project is going to be yours. This is really, this is really a nice, charming little bench to, to have in your garden. And or on your deck, or maybe your patio, or whatever, but this is your project that I'm, I'm giving away to you. I hope you enjoy it, and uh, it's just my way of saying thank you to all of you. I appreciate every one of you so very much. All right, well, I'm going to get back to work, and uh, everybody enjoy their Sunday. All right, guys, bye-bye.